What's good, you guys? It is Rebel of the New. You are now riding with Lance Courier. And forgive me, I'm going to have to turn the air on just a tiny bit so the phone doesn't overheat. Me, I'm used to being hot, but right, technology, you can't really... There's no homeostasis with technology. <laughs> so anyway, uh, well, it is. It's called turning the freaking phone off. Chapter 7.3 in Scorching Ping Pong Girls, right? That's the latest chapter, and it's been out for about a month. I'm assuming that Ping Pong Scans, our unofficial translation team, is getting busy on that. And they have a harder job than I do because they got to actually scanslate it, which means they got to do the typesetting and all that stuff. They got to make it look beautiful. But me, I just decided that instead of sitting on it forever, because I don't know, like who knows when they'll be done. They, they got a, a massive job and they're not getting paid for it. <laughs> Why don't I just go ahead and, and put out my little shoddy rendition? So I know generally what is going on, having gone through and translated that chapter. And I think now we've got some pretty good evidence with which we can analyze Kurba's character. Kurba Hagakurogi or whatever the hell her name is. I'm, not, I, I'm still trying to remember their names, Teikoku. It's not as cool as the Supame, let alone the Mozuyama names, but hey. Kuruba is the main antagonist. Some people might say villain. Both of those are, to an extent, subjective. But she is definitely the main antagonist of this current arc that we're in. The whatever place we're at tournament arc. I assume it's Tokyo. All we know is that it's a district slash city level tournament. And it probably is Tokyo, but that's, that's not as important. What is important is that we've got some insight into her character based on this last chapter. We had already had some insight before, but now we can really get into the nitty gritty here. So, as I said, I'm going to be doing one of these about every chapter or so, because this story needs it. It really needs the explanation because it's so damn well written, and because it deserves it, because it's, it should be so damn popular. <laughs> but, alas... Anyhow, let's not get too negative, let's talk about it. Let's get in the right lane so I don't gotta worry about driving too fast here. Let's let this person pass me on the right. Let them pass me on the right. And then let's go ahead and get over to that right lane so we can put the engine down a bit, let it relax a bit, and get to talking. Okay. Sorry, if you wanna pass me, you're gonna have to go on the left. That, that's how it's supposed to be done. Now, getting to the story proper. So our team right now, Susan Gahara, they have just gotten their asses whooped by this, uh oh, a bump, by Teikoku Academy or Girls Academy, whatever they're called, which was for the longest time, I forgot, like a decade or so or a little longer, a premier city level tennis girls academy, <laughs> like tennis girl competition academy in the middle school, division, league. They are very good, though this seems to be where they max out because we didn't really hear about them competing in the nationals and, and winning, <laughs> right? Let alone making it too far out there. This, however, seems to be on the upswing because Kuraba, whatever her last, Hakuro, Hakuroba, I think, I can't remember. She is national level and the rest of the team is national level. And so they are way better than their forerunners, their, their forebearers previous girls in Teikoku Academy. They're so good that they shut Suzume Gohara out. They beat them all without losing a single game. <laughs> and you gotta run three out of five games to win a match against a, an opponent, right? In your whole team match lineup. But they didn't lose a single game. They, they destroyed the competition. I don't remember every single one of their names, but what I do know is that our girls, Koryuri, and then Aguri, and then Kiruka, Hanabi, Mune Mune, Kiruka and Mune Mune play doubles together, and Hokuto, they all lost without winning a single game. So it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but I want to stress that because this is the main team, and because, like, we're speaking meta here, because we have not gotten all too far into the story. But at the same time, like we've been, I, I last posted on that sub, I first, excuse me, posted on that subreddit coming back for the reboot, right, of Scorching Ping Pong Girls Reburn. I first, I first posted on that subreddit about four months ago, which doesn't seem like a lot. 
and it isn't. Four months ago as of the time of this video. Before that, there had been like a five year hiatus. Anybody who knows about Scorching Ping Pong Girls really would know that they'd been waiting for five years to get back to the story because Asuno, she, she just had some problems in that regard. That's the, uh, the mangaka, Yagura Asuno. So re really Yagura, but, but I'm trying to be respectful. Asuno, she had some uh, problems in that regard, Ms. Asuno. So, and I know if you're a Naruto fan, you're like, isn't that a dude? But I, I don't, I, I'm not questioning it. <laughs> she, uh, she, I don't know what, I don't want, I don't even want to speculate about what went on behind the scenes, right? If you want to see with my speculation, go to the Reddit subreddit for that. But what we do know is that we weren't getting any content for a long time. And so my, what I'm getting at is that from that long ass period up until like four months ago, the last arc right before that hiatus was in the preliminary rounds of the tournament that we're in right now. So we have not made a huge amount of power, uh, progress, like character-wise and all that, yes, it's well written in that regard. Seeing cool flashy moves, all that, yes, a little more subjective, but I would say it's still, it's still got that. However, in terms of the plots, we have not gotten too far, which might mean a few things, but what I'm focusing on is that it's probably going to just, you might want to warn yourself inside that this might not be the longest story because we are at the point where like <laughs> our team is getting destroyed and it's like how much time do they have left to train because we're already either city level tournament and then however long it takes that's going to be done and then there's going to be the not the preliminaries the prefectural level which I guess you could compare to like the state level in terms of America as far as you know, there's no regionals. There might be a regional. And then there's the nationals. I, I can't even remember. There, there might have been a regionals, but I, I can't remember. That that would have been some very early on context that hasn't been mentioned in a while. But even supposing there is a regionals, that's three leagues ahead of where we are right now. That's not to, and to be a little bit more specific, that's three tournaments, right? Not three tournament divisions, but three entire tournaments that our group of girls would have to play that's not many, that's just three tournaments. And then after that, they can decide if they wanna go, uh, Yasuo can decide if she wants to go ahead and, and do more with the national, uh, post nationals and all that. Have them go, some of them go to high school, Kiwuka and Mune Mune namely, at least in this team. And then everybody else continue as seniors in middle school or, or whatever, it, which in this case would be ninth grade. That's why I say seniors in middle school is a little bit wrong even. Japanese terms, but their third years in middle school, their last years in middle school. We could do it that way, but the original story will have been completed within three tournaments, unless something new gets introduced. Three tournaments max. Really, I'm seeing it like two. So they've just lost, and it's like, how much time do you have left to progress? How much time do you have left to accumulate more skill? Because these are, unless they're like knocked out by somebody else, but, but then take Hoku if they get knocked out by somebody else, you would assume <laughs> that their opponents are gonna be even more of a threat to Suzume Gohara, even more of, a, of an insurmountable challenge. And so with these girls, it's like, at this point in the game, is Asuno gonna try and stretch it out by having them straight up lose the tournament? And then they gotta do some real ass training? Now that, uh, who knows? because I don't know exactly explicitly what the overall structure here is. So I gotta get this cough drop in my mouth real quick before my voice gets too dry. I feel it already. We don't know what the, what the entire structure is. What we do know is that these tournaments happen once a year, right? So this, this city tournament, if they lose, they, like, unless they try to go into some other type of league that I, I don't know <laughs> where it exists, like, who, who knows where that is, or if that's even a, an option. But unless they try to do that, there's no way that they can continue, right? There's definitely no way, that they, no way they can continue in this league. Put that key away. Because they have, they would have lost. <laughs> they would have dropped out. 
They can't progress up the ladder because they lost in the middle rung right now. They lost in the, they, they won their local tournaments around a little small area and they would have lost, bam, dropped out of the city league. This is the city, yeah, basically the city league. And so because of that, they can't progress up to the prefectures. They can't progress up to the nationals. And so now, the only option is to, like I said before, play another league or they just continue again next year without Mune Mune and Kiruka. And is that the route we're going to have to do it? And they, they get darker and edgier and stronger and grittier. Who knows? We, we really have no idea. And that's not to say it's bad riding. It's just to say this thing has not... She really takes time like with these tournaments. And so there are pros and cons to it we're gonna get to the overall plot but it's just gonna take some time to get there but let, let's go into talking now that we set this up let's go into talking about Kurba a little bit more because I've basically been bitching this whole time but really it, it's sort of impressive we, we've learned a few things about Kurba not just her personality but her whole struggle I think is probably the best way to frame it she is so good that there is nobody in this tournament, apparently, who can pose a challenge to her that we know of. We, we just don't know. I, I, I would, the reason I say we just don't know is because, on the one hand, it's a round-robin tournament, and so you would expect that they have already... They, they, they've played... Anybody who they've played, they've beaten 5-0. They've not lost a single game, like we said. It's not just Susan Megahara. And they won all their preliminary rounds and all that stuff. And so the top two from the preliminary rounds advance, just like Susan Megahara beat Subame, barely, like really barely. If Agui had lost to Kumami, then <laughs> Kohime would have fucked Koyuri up. And so that would have been, they would have lost. But they, either way, they were both going to advance because the top two teams advance. So Subame advanced and Suzume Gahara advanced. And Teikoku, whoever they beat, who was in second place, both of those teams advanced, regardless. Now, it's the same thing for any other bracket, because you've seen more than just Suzume Gahara, Subame, Teikoku, and one other team. We've already seen more teams than that. We've seen Major Osaka, there's this team called Sekirei, blah, blah, blah. We've got Mozuyama here, so, so we know we got like some nuns and whatever. I don't know if they're Sekirei or whatever. <laughs> we've not seen Sekirei at all, but we see like we've seen just a whole bunch of like mooks and, and shirts with random faces and stuff. So th there are a ton of teams here, and so there are a ton of a ton of preliminary rounds. And so what that means is that Teikoku, oh, let's stay in this land. Let's just keep it small, keep it uh, calm. Teikoku is going to play probably more than they've already played and and i would assume beat more than they've already beaten we don't know that they have played subame i'm assuming they have not i'm assuming they have not played moziyama either i'm assuming they played like some scrub team right before susa megahara and that's it like they were finished with their match and then they played Susan Megahara and we're talking about the official tournament proper here. We're not talking about the preliminaries and all those people they beat. We're talking about now we're in the real big boy leagues or big girl leagues rather. And so they've not really gotten to prove themselves. It's still up in the air as to how good Kurba is in actuality because even though she's better than Koyuri, I mean, Kuraba is better than Koyuri, and Chiharu is definitely better than Koyuri, too, because Chiharu can keep up with Kuraba, and Kuraba destroys Koyuri. <laughs> Koyuri can't even get the ball, and then Kuraba is actually trying. She can't even return a single shot. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that even though I'm hyping up Teikoku, and I'm hot as heck right now, even with the AC running, so I'm just like, forgive me for trying to catch my breath. Even though we know that Teikoku is better than Suzume Gahara, and even though we know that the top two in Teikoku, at least I'm assuming the top two are Chiharu and Kuraba, because Kuraba says that Chiharu, I think Mogami actually says Chiharu is the only person who can keep up with Kuraba. 
in the tournament so far that that she's seen play. But the, the thing is, it, then again, it could mean that we've only seen Shiharu go up against Kurba and Ren. We haven't seen, or not Ren, but, but keep up with Kurba. We haven't seen anybody else on their team, Takeoku Academy, go against Kurba. We just haven't seen, I don't know, like, like uh, Sakurogi or, or whatever, you know. It, what's her last name? Kurba's last name? Did I say it was Hakurogi or is it Hakuroba or, or whatever? I can't remember. Uh, Sakurobi or Saku, Saku, the girl with the black hair the, in the bun style. Like like her, we haven't seen her go against her. We haven't seen uh, Hifumi go up against. Like we haven't seen these people go up. I hate saying that name, by the way. That was a poor choice for a name. <laughs> As a dog and Rumpa liker, I, I, I hate saying that fucking name. But in any case, <laughs> I'm just trying to be a little bit open, right, Socratic with my reasoning and question things until we know for sure what the status is. Because we just, we don't know as of right now. And yes, that technically is a plot hole. It's not a major plot hole, but it is a plot hole. We don't know. And, and it probably will be filled to some extent or another. We will know the entire pecking order. But for right now, we don't know it because we haven't really seen them play at all, really. You sort of seen Shiharu play. Wait, I smudged up my glasses. And we have seen Kurba play, and that's about it. This bitch Kurba is very much powerful. Regardless of exactly where she is in relation to anybody who we have not seen play, but we've seen play in the past. Like, for example, Kuri, the captain of Moshiyama. We don't know how much better she's gotten since Kuri whipped her ass and made her cry. We don't know how good Kohime is at all, <laughs> let alone how good she's gotten since the last time we've seen her. We will make up for this embarrassment without fail, I assure you. <laughs> we've not seen how good that badass has gotten. <laughs> if she even needs to get better. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we know regardless. <laughs> Gosh, that bitch is so cool. We know regardless that Kurba is among the, the higher tiers in the tournament. We, we just know. Because I, I, I'm sort of cheating here, but I'm assuming that at this level, if you are around uh, Kurba Chiharu's level, that especially Chiharu, since she's the one making this assumption that Kurba is better than everybody, basically, and that there's going to be no competition into the Nationals, that if you are around a level... You can just assume, right? Like, you can conjecture based on looking at the competition how good the competition is. Let alone you got Mogami on your team, too, right? Like, she's not actually playing, but she's reporting, so she's looking at the competition, too. So, <laughs> she's an insightful person. And among, like, all three of them, let alone anybody else on the team, who doesn't really, they don't really seem to give a shit because they're so far above their competition that they can extrapolate that towards anybody else they happen to see playing, that they are above them, right? At least the teams as a whole. That's where we get into the nitpicking as to whether or not they could be better than Tsubame, but are they better than Kohime, right, for example? But still, with all those caveats and asterisks put aside out of the way, Kurba, it's pretty safe to say, right, I don't mind just going in and saying we're, we're more or less speculating at this point because the thing isn't out yet. Like, the, the whole plot has not been unveiled yet. We're still in the middle of the early stages of the tournament. Right? They, 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 Tsubasame and Gahara have only played two matches, or has only played two matches. So, that's... Right? That, that's nothing. They've got to play... They've got to play, I believe, there are two more teams in their bracket to play. One is Sekiro, and then there's like another team. And then they, or Sekirei, I knew I was gonna make that, that reference by accident. One is Sekirei, and then there's another team. And good luck against Sekirei, because they, they did better against Meiji Rosaka, the team that Suzume Gahara played first, than Suzume Gahara did against Meiji Rosaka. Suzume Gahara beat Meiji Rosaka 3-2, thanks to Agari and Koyuri and Munemune slash Kiruka, really, uh, Kiruka probably, <laughs> is always the one pulling uh, Munemune to, to competence. And Hokuto and Nabi, and Nabi lost. So Sekirei beat them 4-1, 
beat Meiji Osaka 4-1. So unless Susan Baker Hart really pulls it together, which, uh, they, they, who knows? I really don't know. I'm assuming they will, just by the logic of things, we're going to see them play some more. Otherwise, they won't rank. Right? They, they won't be able to advance into the next round of, of things against newer teams. But, like, the fact that they have just lost badly, so badly, to Teikoku. Despite how good Teikoku is, this is an emotion thing we're talking about. And they are in emotional straits right now. Dire straits. Because they have lost so badly... They're playing against Sekiro, Sekiro, Sekirei, <laughs> shit. Their, their, their level of, of play against Sekirei is probably going to be compromised. So I can't say with absolute certainty or even near certainty that they're going to win against Sekirei, who, uh, as far as we have seen, based on the score, despite not having seen them play personally, is probably better than, than Suzumega Har, nonetheless, you know, without even having to see them play each other, just based on how they both dealt with Major Osaka. Now, maybe it's a matchup issue, and Major Osaka just matched up worse against Sekirei, or maybe it's because Major Osaka had lost to Tsutsume Gahara already, that sort of compromised Major Osaka's emotional state, and so they did even worse against Sekirei. We don't know. Right? It could be like the same thing that I'm warning might happen with Tsutsume Gahara because they had played Tekiro, a Teki, Tekkyoku, and that could compromise their emotional state against Sekirei. So, getting back on topic to Kurobra, because I know I keep saying that, but I, I really want to lay this context around so we can sort of like glean some sort of hazy understanding as to where everybody relates to each other so far in this one round, this first round here, official first round of the tournament. But out of the preliminaries, they barely survived against Tsubame. They didn't get to see Kohime play. She probably would have destroyed all of them. Like, in all honesty, she probably would have. Like, I already said right in the last videos. And then they barely survived against Meiji Osaka by about the same score. I'm sorry, dude. I can go a little bit faster than that. Let's, let's raise this cruise control up a bit. They barely survived against Meiji Osaka by about the same score they had beaten Tsubame by. And then they get shut out completely by Teikoku. Now... They need to beat Mejiro, they not Mejiro, they need to beat Sekirei, and they need to beat, uh, whatever the next team is going to be, I don't know, we really don't know the name, and if they don't beat both of those teams, then they're not going to qualify for the next round. Teikoku, they're, they're, like, just, I believe Mogami said she's beating everybody, uh, Teikoku is beating everybody already. <laughs> I think so. And if not, then if Mogami didn't say that, Teikoku had beaten whoever they had played all by, like, 5-0. It's one of the two. The point is, regardless, they are assuming for advancing to the next round. So they're going to advance to the next round. That's, like, all but assured regardless of anything that we see them do until that next round. Who, who cares? Unless Asano does some real subversion fuckery, it doesn't matter. We've seen that they're going to advance. And riding that logic, Rave, we know that, that Kuruba is the captain of that team, and we know that Kuruba is the best person on that team. It, with all, like, likelihood. It's not, we don't know for certain, but it's possible, right? It's extremely possible. <laughs> and she destroyed Koyuri. To the extent that Koyuri couldn't even, when she got serious against Koyuri, Koyuri couldn't return a single shot. Okay, we know this for certain. We've seen it. We also know that Chiharu was so bored by the competition, not just who she played and she destroyed Augury without losing a single game, but, but like the fact that she's looking at these other teams and there's like nobody in this low-level ass city tournament can give us any sort of a challenge. And I'm going based on my translation, right, because Ping Pong Skins hasn't had theirs out yet, so take what I say with a grain of salt if you really want to, it's up to you. But I think I've got a, at least some sort of a read on where we are with things. Shiharu is thoroughly unimpressed with anybody here that she has seen. Now, I'm imagining that she has mostly seen her bracket. So, Subame is not in her bracket. Neither is Mosuyama. But they can go across to different brackets and, and see what the competition is doing in their own, like, their respective sections. Just like Mosuyama 
uh, Corby's like, let's see what's going on with Susume Gahara. And so after they had beaten their, their match, whoever they were playing at that moment in time, they went across to see Koyuri playing against Christine Christie and Major Osaka. So it could probably be the same thing with Shiharu and whoever else decide to go from the Takoku team to see what their competition would be across the board. Point is, they, they it's like, we're not gonna get anything here. We need to go to the Nationals to get some sort of competition. This is one more caveat, caveat I wanna, caveat, whatever, I wanna add before we get to talking about Kurba proper, I apologize. Just like what happened last year with Susan Gahara, they did not need to win to go to the Nationals. They didn't need to win the city tournament. They advanced pretty well up there because they had Kumami and for a time, I'm sorry, for a time they had Kumami until Kumami quit. And they had Shido. And so they had done so well up until the point where Kumami left and Kiruka was injured and they lost Kiruka that they could go and challenge Tsubame and then they lost, but they did well enough to qualify for the Nationals regardless. So we know that Kumami left before they went and, and played against Tsubame. At what exact point in time, we don't know. I want to assume it was during the tournament, but we, we don't know. The point is that if, if it weren't during the tournament, then they were still that strong. And they either had some other upperclassmen there filling in for Kumami, which he left before the tournament started, or whatever, right? They, they had somebody there. And so they, they were good enough to be able to qualify for the Nationals even without having beaten Tsubame. Now, we don't know how far they got where they played Tsubame. We don't know, like, at what round they played Tsubame in. But the, the whole point is that they don't have to win the damn thing, the entire city tournament, just to qualify for the prefectures, let alone the Nationals, right? So they lose to Tsubame. They somehow still qualify for the Nationals. So they might have just flamed out in the prefectures because that's not mentioned. It really isn't. We know that Query made the semifinals of the prefectures with whatever team she was in. And we know that the furthest that Aguri and, and them got, Kiruka, really, was and Shido. They were the, the people in charge of that team, Susan Megahara at the time. The furthest they had gotten were the uh, city quarterfinals. Now... I'm, I'm going to assume that Shido wasn't able to play, and since it's like mostly Hokuto and her ilk and Hanabi and them, that they're not gonna qualify, they're not gonna do, oh gosh, fucking Harvey, Harvey Davidson, you can expect them to sound like shit, because like she's dealing with a bunch of scrubs now on her team, she can't really get that far up there, she can't get to the prefectures, prefectural level. However, whatever happened, it was still good enough for them to qualify for the Nationals. So, so this is how it could be. Nationals can be open enrollment and anybody can come in and qualify. Or Nationals is like so low bar, subjectively speaking, that even as poorly as Susan Megahara did, which is just making the quarterfinals of the city levels, that they were still able to qualify. We don't know. I just don't My inclination right now is that I'm not feeling too worried about their being able to qualify for the Nationals doing well in the Nationals is a different story, let alone the, the remote as in Antarctica possibility that they are going to win the Nationals. For me right now, that is completely off the table. Like if you can't get past Kurba, who is definitely national level, but if like if you can't get past her, you're not winning the Nationals. You know, unless the draw opens up significantly, you are not winning the Nationals. And so I'm not even gonna entertain that for a second right now. What I will say is that Kurba, as to whether or not she can win the Nationals, that's a different story. Kurba is at the point right now to where nobody that she has played has been a challenge. She's played Jumanji in the preliminaries, the finals of the preliminaries, and I'm assuming that team, I can't remember the name of her team, Jumanji's team has, was like second place, so they have more than likely advanced because they were in the finals the round robin preliminary format and so they're going to be somewhere in this tournament right now the main official city tournament we do not know whether or not 
uh, they are going to be played against, but safe to say they are not a threat to Susan Megahara or like Susan Megahara is a little bit more of a who knows, but for Takoku, probably not <laughs> because Takoku just crushed them. Susan Megahara, Jumonji is worse than Koyuri because Koyuri had to make Kuraba try, and Kuraba didn't need to try against Jumonji, she, she just didn't. <laughs> All she did was use her regular RPB backhand, and that was enough to, to shut Jumanji out. But Query didn't make Kuriba try. So, assuming that, like, Jumanji is the strongest person on that team, because Jumanji's the one who played against Kuriba, if everybody else is weaker than that, then it's probably going to be easy for Susan Megahara to beat Jumanji's team. But who knows? Maybe the rest of them are that much stronger than the rest of Susan Megahara. Which would be weird, but that's... That's sort of how Subame's team is. The top two are very strong, and everybody else is, uh... <laughs> I mean, well, Nemory is pretty good, too, but, but you get my point. You get my overall drift. And, and as a matter of fact, well, let's, let's not get too far into it, but I was going to say that Moziyama is sort of similar. We've got Hanab... Uh, not Hanab. Goodness gracious, if Hanabi were on that damn team, she would not last. We've got, uh... What's her name? Sasori? Sasurida, and we've got uh, Yura Yuragi, and they are strong, <laughs> very strong, and probably better than, or, like, okay, I don't, I don't want to get to that. The point is that they won their matches, and the two supposedly strongest players, Kuri and Zakuro, lost the matches, and not only did they lose the matches and the former two won, but the former two weren't trying <laughs> at all. They, they were going, like, they were playing Hokuto and Hanabi and shit. But they just straight up weren't trying. They didn't give a fuck about their competition. And so it's like, uh, how much weaker are you technically or theoretically than Sakuro and Kuri? How much weaker are you? Kuriba, on the other hand, she is so strong that she, like, like again, just talking about this bracket. She is so strong that the only person who has made her try is... Koyuri, and when she tried, she, Koyuri couldn't, Koyuri slumped over the table in total pathetic defeat. She was cursed, man. That's the only way I can say it is how the story says it. She was cursed. She was so cursed that she, like, more or less lost her will to play. And then she didn't wake up until after the match was already over. And then she's like, wait, I can still keep playing. How did I lose? How did I lose so badly? I, I, I didn't get to do anything. I still have so much energy yet. There are so many moves I wanted to try. There are so many strategies I wanted to look into. I, what happened? <laughs> That's how badly she did. And Kirby is one of the better players, if not one of the best players in this bracket. We don't know if she's going to lose her next two matches or any of them. But we do know is that she she's pretty good. Now, I, I don't know how good, right? Because she was, los she was losing to Christine Christie. And she had to pull her ass together to beat Christine Christie. And Christine Christie only has one year of training. So, we, you know, we really don't know exactly where Corey ranks in things. What we do know is that they're probably underprepared. This is probably not the toughest bracket overall, even though Teikoku is, is there. It's still probably not the toughest bracket overall. There's probably other teams that are as good, if not better, than Susamega Hara slash Majiro Saka. And then Kurba, Kurba, she's just... She is so bored by the competition that she was dismayed. Utterly dismayed by Koryuri. And it seems like this has been a thing that she's been, like, she's cursed. And this is actually a trope. It's like, I, I forget the name of the trope, but it, it's, it's the I'm so good that I'm, I'm just dying for a worthy opponent trope. This seems to be only countered by Chiharu. At least that's what the narrative is saying through Mogami so far. That there is only one person that she's ever run into who can keep up with her to some extent. Not even beat her, but, but keep up with her. <laughs> and that's Chiaru. And nobody else that she's run into in her local area, even in the, the city level, seems to be 
at her. Now, this is the first time that she has entered a city tournament because this is her first year playing for Takoku, at least, ever. <laughs> she's a third year at Takoku, but this, like, this is her first year playing. So that she's just either joined the team for the first year or she has transferred into this place from another school for the first time. Or for the first time. She's, she's transferred. And so she is not, I, I, she's not played like the whole spectrum of players to know at the highest levels who can and can't handle her style. But what she is desperate for is somebody to be able to do that. And she is seeming like she's getting kind of ornery about it. Not like in an angry sort of way, but like I am getting depressed very quickly because I, I don't. This is a girl who has a love for table tennis. A real love. She said this. She said this in the first chapter. But this love is, I won't say masked with or masked under some, a love for something. Like, she has a love for table tennis, and she has a love for style and flair and things that she thinks are appealing. Let's just say appealing to her. And it's like, you know, you know, right? Like when you have two things that you want to be good at or that you want to do for money is probably the, the best way to put it. And you knew how like when you were a kid, unless you like just end up very well off in life and in that case, congratulations. But when you were a kid, you were like, I want to be able, and when I say a kid, I mean like you're in college during you're in high school going into college. And you're like, I want to be able to do this. I enjoy doing this. And I want to do it for money. But then you got to settle, right? And when you got to settle, the thing that you want to do for money, at first, it just slides down into a hobby. And then what you actually end up doing, you don't really enjoy it. Now, you might be good at it. You might even be better at it than what you like doing. But... <laughs> What you like doing isn't going to pay you because you're not good enough at it to the extent that you can get paid or that you can progress to some sort of notorious level, right? Some sort of famous level where people know you or know of you. And it's like that with Korba. What she really likes to do is play table tennis, but she can't unlock it to the extent, like she can't really thoroughly enjoy it because the people that she wants to, to meet to run into to to help unlock her skill to the point to where she's able to fully invest herself in it she's not running to these people and because she hasn't run into them it's it's like it well it literally is a chore now it's it's like what most people would call a career and for some people, like the lucky few, congratulations if that's you, your career is what you really, really enjoy doing. Like, it's your heart and soul. But for most people, it's just their career. It's just their job. It's just their duty, their obligation, so to speak. And she is not happy with it. She probably would be if she could unlock that aspect of her career that she could enjoy. In this case, it would be finding somebody to match up against and be able to really ah, just let loose. I can unwind. I can enjoy myself. I don't have to uh, tense, restrain myself and be all awkward because I can't do what I really want to do in this field. <laughs> right? If I, if I want to get some sort of fun to, to like, to like the, the dimmest extent, I have to play the game, right? Play within the confines of the game. I can't go outside the box and do things my way. I have to go by what they say, go by what they're able to do, go by what their restrictions, their limits are. And if you work in corporate, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You are not necessarily worse than them, but they are above you in an emotional sense because they, they have a control over what you're able to do, how far you're able to go. If Corbo wants to go too far, then she's not going to be able to 
to do what she really wants to do. Why? Because she she, she won't be able to play at all. Like they, they will not be able to get to her shots because her shots are net cords. But she tries like they are not literally net cords. But if the opponent is not good enough, this seems to be the case based on what Mogami is saying with watching Chiharu play. If the opponent isn't good enough, then she won't be able to act freely. You know, it's it's a little bit of a mangled up analogy, but you get the ultimate what I'm trying to say here because this is basically her job or she's putting this at the level of her job right now, even though she can lose at any point in time and her parents can just tell her to, to go home and stop doing it. So, so like this, like with Christy, but this is, this is still the highest priority she has right now in terms of what she ultimately wants to be able to do well, successfully is play table tennis. But she's still beholden, one way or another, to what her opponents are able to put out. <laughs> and I guess to bring the analogy home, what her opponents are able to put on her, what her opponents are able to dictate to her. If they can't dictate that she's going to be able to hit a shot as for how she wants it and it get returned, well, then they just denied her that. They denied her that right. They denied her that freedom. And that's what she's experiencing right now with everybody. And that's what she just, just experienced with Corey Reed in particular. She does, she does not have that freedom. She does not have that. Well, there's no real point in trying to emphasize it anymore. You can get what I'm saying. But she, she basically doesn't have the authority. But the premise is very interesting. Because normally what you have in fiction is you have a character who is just, I was looking for a threat and I couldn't find a threat. I couldn't, well, I couldn't find a worthy opponent. I couldn't find a, a worthy challenger. And so finally, you can be the one to light the spark in my heart, etc., etc. Kurpa is, is like that too. I'm not trying to say that she, like, this is completely bucking the trend, right? But first of all, she has Chiharu. The only difference is that Chiharu isn't an opponent. She's a teammate. Second of all, she's going to get that challenge in the Nationals. So it's not a question. But third of all, and most importantly here, is that Kuraba, she is... She, the reason that she doesn't hold back is because she's partly blaming herself. It, it, uh, let me rephrase that. The reason that she holds back, I should say, is that she is partly blaming herself. She doesn't view her brand of table tennis as good enough to like good enough to win matches, but it doesn't mess real with what she likes, her her style, right, her flair, her her to go back to the hobby thing, what she enjoys doing. She enjoys looking good. She enjoys people who look good. She enjoys people who, who are cool, who have an excitement factor to their personality, who have ambitions and goals that they try to achieve and don't give up despite the opposition. Kurba herself is not like this in terms of table tennis. She has resigned herself to... Not, some people might say she has resigned herself to hitting net cords. But it, it gets to like the layman, it like it might look like that. But it goes deeper than that because this is Yakura Asana. <laughs> this is scorching Bing Bong girls. Damn it! What she is really designed, uh, <laughs> resigned herself to doing is not being good enough. Not being good enough to keep the ball high. She hits extremely flat, and so it's much more likely for there to be a net board if the opponent cannot keep the ball up. It's like a rate that's constantly pressing down. It's like, as a matter of fact, trying to do a rep. And if you are good, you're going to be able to keep doing that rep, keep holding that rate and keep pushing it up and, and, and you know, bringing it back down, but, but not letting it fall on you, right? Not letting it fall and crush your chest. If you are not good, well, let, let's go a little bit at a time. If you are middling good, right, by her standards, then you're going to be able to do it for a certain amount of time. You can do your reps, and then you'll get tired, and then you'll have to, like, you know, let it 
sit on your chest or whatever, or you can ideally put it back on the, the rack, but you can't go anymore. And that's more like a Chiharu. She can't go anymore. She eventually gets scored on. But she can she can tangle with Kurba's net cord inclining shots. She can tangle with those net cord uh, tendency bound shots. You know what I'm saying? They, they have the inclination towards being net cords or extremely flat trajectories. And she can keep the ball elevated with counter top spin or a or extremely precise flat angle to where the ball doesn't hit the net when Kurba does her retaliatory shot. If you are below that level, however, which is basically everybody else that you've seen or heard of, who's played against Kurba at least, then you like you get that rate and it's just too much for you. You can't hold it up and so it crushes you. You can't keep the ball going up when it's your turn. And so Kurba herself being the like allegory for the rate, she just, did I use that word right? <laughs> But like she is, she is the symbol for the rate. Well, I guess she's not trying to represent, but whatever. She's she's she is the rate, right? And so in that analogy, she crushes Koyuri because she's too heavy for Koyuri to lift back up, or even more precisely, her shots are too heavy to lift back up. And she's like, "Here I come." She's excited. She's like, "I can finally unleash. I can." Just, ah, yes, I've been waiting for this moment. And then Corby fails to hit it back because her shot wasn't strong enough in the first place. And then Corby's shot dies. It goes over the net, but it like dies. It hits the net cord and it, it dies. <laughs> it just barely hits the, the tape of the net and then it dies on the other side. And then she gets a little bit saddened. It's another shot, the same result. Her excitement dies further. She hits another shot, dies again. It's another shot, it dies again. She, if you read my translation, or if you already know Japanese, <laughs> Japanese then you will see that when she is addressing Koiri at the end, after she has won, she is not rubbing it in Koyuri's face. She, she's not like, hey, I beat you. Or she's not, you couldn't handle it. She's nowhere close to that. She's like, I hope that you would be the one to save me from this curse. Why? Because she doesn't trust herself to. And this dude named uh, Fable, he's like, all the girls gotta be saved. And that that's... Like, that's subjective, so you can make an argument for that because it's subjective. But in, in Kurba's case, while that is true, it goes beyond they have to be saved by somebody. It, it goes to the fact that Kurba doesn't think she is good enough to vary her style. She's not good enough to, like, if, if you are that nice, then you're going to be Sasori Da compared to Hanabi, right? I'm not saying Sasori Da could kid, like, <laughs> I'm not saying she can beat Kurba. I don't know. We know that she's not lost the game that she's played in this tournament because they are all that fucking good in Moziyama. They're also national level. But what we do know is that Sasurida versus Hanabi is a bigger gap than than Kurba versus Koyuri. Not because Koyuri can't return uh, Kurba shots. That doesn't even follow the logic, right? Because I said it's a bigger gap. And if Koyuri can't return the shots at all, at least Hanabi can return Sasorida's shot, so Sasorida should technically be a smaller gap, a smaller discrepancy in skill against Hanabi compared to Kurba and Koyuri. But no, it's a bigger one because Kurba isn't able to play all really nearly how she wants to and toy with Koyuri so that Koyuri can do well and still not have a chance. If Kurba doesn't go all out, then she gets what happened with Jumanji, and Jumanji starts scoring on her, or she gets what happened with Koyuri, and Koyuri starts scoring on her, and she loses games. She can't, she can't play with the opponent and still do that well. That requires, like I told this other dude, Rabbit, that requires an exceptional level of skill. I would know because I, I played online fighting games in the past. And there is a, depending on your skill level, there can be a very thin line 
between going from taking it like, tch, I don't even have to try against you easy on an opponent and, oh shoot, I went too easy. Oh damn, now I gotta make up for it. it they, they've, they've gone ahead and closed the gap because either I messed up, lapsed in concentration, or the opponent got energized to where they were, they were like, they pulled out some unknown factor of strength that I had not foreseen, or my play style was still constant even then, and like I tried to bury it up, but I had some intangible tendencies, some subconsciousness that I couldn't foresee, and so they were able to read me, and now that I'm trying to turn up the heat, they can still hang with me a little bit more, and now I'm feeling the pressure, or I'm just straight up feeling the pressure, because I'm putting more pressure on myself, and so I'm, I'm getting nervous, and I'm making mistakes because of blah, 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 right? It's way harder, and Corpo doesn't have that level of skill to where she can go not all out against Koryuri and still not have to worry about it. She has to go all out, and when she goes all out, she's not good enough to where she can go all out and hit a whole bunch of lobs and hit a whole bunch of drop shots on purpose that don't like hit the net and die because that's considered rude, but but like to like just die right over the net, like right past the net, or to go ahead and and crush the ball and Kirby just can't return the the sharp angles or the the heavy pace that she's hitting. Right? She, she's not at that level. With Jumanji, she was at that level. She could play however the hell she wanted to play because she was that good with the RPB. But with Kuruba, she, I'm sorry, with Kuruba, she has to hit those, not net cords, but regular flat shots. I'm not going to make this light and there's no point in trying. <laughs> she is not going to be able to do anything but hit those regular flat shots because if she tries to do anything else, then Kuruba is going to through the implication anyway, like she's the one saying it herself, Kurba. She's going to crush Kurba's attempts. And that's why Kurba had, Kurba had to, in the first place, go all out. There was no way that she could beat Kurri without hitting the same rudimentary, ugly shots, playing the same rudimentary, ugly game, the pressing, boring, generic, to the extent that there are people saying that, and it's not just uh, you, Rabbit, when you're seeing this, but like, like you, you know, watching this, right? Watching this, you might think that that sounds boring. She's just hitting generic flat shot, flat paced shots, like no angle on them, no, no upwards trajectory, no, no loop, right? No curve, no, no chop, no, no side spin or anything like that. And it's, it's just the, the side spin is the curve, but the, the chop is the back spin. She's not hitting with like any type of spin. And it's just straight <laughs> over the net tape and hits the net tape every single time. You're hearing me say this, and you're like, an opponent who does this is very boring. And Kurba would agree. She's she's boring. Her table tennis is boring. Her like what she like when she actually wants to play, it is boring. Which might be like, okay, well then just don't go hard on the opponent then in that case. Well, like that's the catch 22. If she's not going hard, she's going to lose. And this is what I predicted would be her personality the like two chapters ago. I knew this is what was gonna happen because either Asano was looking at me and thank you Asano if you're looking at me <laughs> and my analyses and my predictions or we're just in sync. Because like this is just like the, the best way to write this without going all really nilly and you're making a gamble and it works out or it doesn't. The best way to write it straight is that Kuraba knows that she has a certain thing that she likes. And that is style. That is, some people might say substance, but you could say that running is substance regardless of how you do it, you know? As Brad Gilbert would say in the tennis terms, running ugly. So let's not talk about substance, but let's talk about style. Let's talk about flair. Most people would say that, that hitting the same shot is not flair, <laughs> right? Because there's no extravagance in that. You're hitting the exact same thing. It's still subjective, but it, it's a little bit less opinionated. Or it's a little bit less of a thin line between that. However, because she's not able to hit with flair, because she's not able to hit in the style that she deems fitting, 
of her personality, she thinks that she's basically, a, well, I hate to use your word, rabbit, but a fraud. Not because she's using net cords and that's like cheating or whatever, but to an extent, yes, it makes it too easy, but it also makes it so that neither her nor her opponent can, can enjoy the game, <laughs> basically. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's hand in hand. You just get the stuttering out. It is, sorry, I gotta get some gas. It is to where, since you are winning on every single shot, and every single shot is boring, it's a two-pronged flaw. You're hitting boring shots over and over again, and you're killing the mood for the opponent and yourself if they're not good enough like Chiharu. And two, even if they are good enough, right, you can't do any better than this. You can't do but to rely on hitting those shots that you don't like to hit. If you were that damn nice, then you could say, okay, she can't handle this. Okay, let me see if I can just show her how to try and do these shots. Yeah, okay, you still can't handle this. How about this shot? So yeah, yeah, I got the whole spectrum. I got the whole gambit. Look, welcome to my store. Do you want smashes? Do you want drop shots? Do you want volleys? I can hit, I'm like you worry. I can hit every single type of rally. <laughs> I'm that nice. I can hit it on the, like the, the damn edge of my, my freaking uh, paddle. I can hit it straight up like, like this. And you still can't return it. You see how damn good I am? But no. She's not like that. She has a crutch that she has to rely on, and she feels ashamed for having to rely on it for all those above reasons. Because it's an ugly crutch, because it doesn't suit her personality, because it makes her feel like a loser, because she can't do any better, any different than that. Because it, it makes it too easy for her. And I'm going to suspect, though this hasn't been brought up yet, but I'm going to suspect because it is a hole in her game. Anybody who can counter these shots, like Chiharu can deal with them. We haven't seen her counter them yet. But anybody who can counter these shots is going to be able to beat her very easily because she doesn't have any alternative when she's going all out. Now again, with running ugly, you can start to play below your all-out standard. That doesn't mean you're playing worse. It just means you're not doing what you would normally do when you are exerting close to 100%, let alone 100%, let alone more than that of your energy. It just means that you're you're sort of diddling around. And you can diddle around and you can win against the opponent that way. Just like troll around and hit some shit they would never expect. And she could do that, but there is a higher likelihood, the higher level opponent she plays, that if she tries to change her style and she's not used to changing her style, especially because she's not going all out and doing so, because when she goes all out, she can only do one thing, then the opponent is going to be able to counter her variance that much easier. <laughs> because her shots, I would assume, are weaker. Because they're only so strong now when she goes all out because they're just straight flat. Flat, as hard as possible, just crush the ball so fast that if the opponent can't keep up the pace, it hits the net, her shot. <laughs> it just, she just crushes the ball. Just straight up wallops it. Bam, bam. But like, like anybody who can deal with that, she's going to have to try some different shit. And her different shit is probably going to go out or hit the net and go out. I don't mean go hit the net and bounce in. I mean hit the net and just straight up hit the, the damn net. Not the net core, the net. Right, not the tape, just the straight up net. And it's out. Or it's going to be like they're going to crush her shot. Because she's hitting without confidence, slash, and or she's hitting without power. Let me get my damn gas. Okay, so the car is pumping, and don't do what I'm doing, just going in and out of the car while the car is pumping. That's very unsafe, and if you have to, then touch the metal to de staticize your hands, or whatever the, the word is. But, you see why this is interesting? This is interesting because, yes, this is the, I am looking for a worthy opponent, oh, woe is me, I can't, I can't handle it without the Homer, basically, from Valkyria Chronicles, woe is me. But, at the same time, she's blaming herself. 
and she views herself as a failure. That's why she doesn't mock slash condescend Koyuri as she goes away after having Koyuri on the ground just because she realizes, oh, it's done pumping. She realizes that it's not just Koyuri's fault, it's her fault too. That's why she wants Koyuri to be able to quote unquote save her, or anybody be able to save her. It's because of the fact that she she knows that she can't do it on her own. She can't on her own save herself. Which means, in layman's terms, she can't on her own play any better than she's already playing. That is her max, and she doesn't like what she's able to output at her max. And she wants somebody to beat her. And this is where it gets a little bit iffy, because it's like once they beat her, then what? Is that going to be able to change what you can do? I wouldn't assume so, just because you get your ass beat or, or lose. <laughs> Doesn't mean that you are going to be able to change up your style or improve at all, right? Let me get back this gas. It doesn't mean she's going to be able to improve. So it's like, what is she looking for? That's what I need to know more about Korba's personality. What is her end goal here? Once I know that, then we've got a complete character. You can always add more depth to it, but then we've got a complete character. Because what it seems right now is that she's trying to commit suicide by cop, so to speak, and she's trying to go to some other better player, or preferably, I guess, early on, but presumably it's going to have to be at the Nationals, is what we're going with right now, to check her, or just straight cuff her, stop her, handcuff her, and beat her style. Beat her all-out netcore style. <laughs> it's not technically a netcore style, but that's what it ends up being. Her weaker opponents, anyway. Like her, her flat hitting. And once that happens, then what? <laughs> like, because, because she says that she wants to be able to... Like, I, actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, there are two different goals here. Unless she was straight up lying to Mogami. She told Mogami in Chapter 0, I remember in Chapter 7.3, We've got a lot of time to develop personalities here, but it, it hasn't really come up in between. She told Mogami, when Mogami was interviewing them, that she wanted to, Kurbo told Mogami, that she wanted to go ahead and win the Nationals and then bring their flair to the Nationals and make the Nationals stand out. Now, I can understand that. That's, that's, that's in line with, you know, her, her hobby, her likes. Sure. And she's also said that she likes playing table tennis. Sure. However. However, she does not seem to mesh with what Chiharu has said Chiharu has planned for them. Chiharu's plan for them is, and this is weird because they're friends. At least I assume they're friends. Chiharu's plan for them <laughs> Like, we really don't know. It could be, it could, I would not be surprised if they weren't friends like that. Just like Kohime is not friends with her group. Except for maybe Kumami. But Chiharu said, while Kurba was asleep, that... Her, like, it's weird because, like, Japanese doesn't have pronouns. So we don't know if when, when Chiharu is saying this... I mean, they do have pronouns, but you can get by in a sentence without saying the pronouns. Just like, sort of, like, you can do it with, like, uh, Spanish. You can just say, like, uh, vamos instead of nosotros vamos or whatever. You can do that in Spanish. You can do that in Japanese. You can, you can do that in some other languages where the context is, is there. And the rules of the language allow for it. But since this is Japanese and this is one of those languages, Chiharu says that her plan or our plan, we don't know which, or Kuraba's plan, we don't know which, is for them to go to the Nationals for Kuraba to get a good opponent, someone who can challenge her. That's not, not beat her, necessarily, but challenge her. But we don't know if this is what Kuraba wants. It could be what Kuraba wants. There could be an implication of someone that Kuraba can find worthy enough to beat her. 
or it could be that Kuriba just wants to win and she'll be satisfied that way and she's like giving up on the whole getting a worthy challenge thing and the worthy challenge is just straight that is completely Shiharu's notion that she's taken upon herself to try and get for Kuriba without Kuriba's no or approval <laughs> like without her knowledge or without her agreeing with it, like that's what I want for myself because she feels bad about Kurba because she feels bad that that or feels bad for Kurba the fact that Kurba is so cursed and feels so sad that there's no one who can give her the joy that she wants out of table tennis which she's worked so hard at <laughs> and where she's topped at this level at this variety level of variety this is, it's, it's all possible. And at the end of the day, we won't know until we know. But what we do know is that Kurba is not happy and Chiharu is also not happy. And Chiharu seems to care a little bit more about what she wants than what Kurba wants. And what I mean by that is that she seems to be like, I'm just getting this impression. But it seems like she is putting her values on to Kurba. Because, again, we, we don't hear Kurba's name in, like, Shiharu's goal as the, the, not the subject. She is the subject of Chiharu's goal, but she is not the, she's not the agent of Chiharu's goal. She's not the one who wants this to be done. Per se, we don't know. It's not inherent within the Senate structure. And besides that, Chiharu has, I mean, Kurba, excuse me, has said that she wants to win the Nationals. So what I'm assuming, and she wants to have fun doing it and, and bring her style to it and, and show everybody how Teikoku gets down, how Teikoku can change the scope of what the Nationals is all about. Instead of being some stickler, old school style of tournament, it is, can be a whole bunch of glitter and glitz, right? Now, that is some sort of discrepancy, in my opinion. That's a discrepancy. Because she wants to win. And if she finds a challenge, yeah, she can find a challenge and still win, but there's a likelihood that she might lose, right? Now, I, I'm still just speculating there, so who knows? But, but my assumption, plus the fact that Chiharu was being a jerk to Kurba, and Chiharu was, after she beat, not, not beat Kurba, but like she, she made, she played Kurba so hard that Kurba fell asleep. Kurba won, but Kurba still was worn out and she fell asleep. And that is like played for jokes, but she still made Kurba fall asleep. <laughs> So Chiharu is no joke, right? And we also see that Kurba has limits because Kurba fell the fuck asleep. Like it's played for fun, but we see at the like other side of the the spear that Kuri goes way harder than that when she's training with Sakuro and, and whatever. And Sakuro goes way harder than that, let alone all, all of them. And yet they get worn out and shit, except for Kuri and, and Zakuro now. But, like, and Zakuro in the past got way worn out and shit, but, but they didn't fall asleep. I guess Zakuro died that one time. Like, they were playing around and they had her die, but, like, she, she, like, then they never, like, fall, they didn't go to sleep, straight up to sleep. Like, I'm so worn the fuck out that, and, and Kuriba never did either in the past, from what we saw. Like, the past scenes. She has trained to death <laughs> to master the RPB and we never saw her slumber and when she was like going all out against Koyuri Koyuri was able to handle it so maybe she wasn't going all all out she wasn't going 120% and so since Koyuri couldn't handle it she, she stayed awake but she was still going all out and she didn't go the hell to sleep you see I'm like there are instances where Kuriba is going at, like to the max and she doesn't fall asleep and so since Shiharu makes her fall asleep it is really a credit to Kurba's character development 
and like at least by the scene is her character jumping and it's also a credit to Chiharu's power and to an extent you can say Chiharu's character development too the same way uh, character jumps how she's changing from scene to scene it's, it's just interesting to note that and Kuroba we don't know again we don't know exactly whether or not Chiharu's what she said in goal and Kuroba what she said whether the end goes the two mesh but what we do know is that it's definitely possible and what we know is that Kurba doesn't seem like like she has pretty much moved on she's written Kuri off she said sayonara which is like not until we meet again it's like goodbye <laughs> like just period goodbye that's what sayonara means to the extent to like if it's played for laughs it's very possible it could be played for laughs because it's like Sayonara, dude. You're, you're coming to school tomorrow. Like, is something is something wrong? Like, are you, are you feeling depressed? Like, what, what's, what's gonna happen, man? Tell me what's up. You gotta talk, like that, or like, you know, something like that. It's like something that somebody would use when they aren't too familiar with the language, and they they like like if then you're saying in French, you're gonna say instead of uh, je fini, I finished. You're gonna say je suis fini, I I I'm finished. You know, on some like some Romeo Juliet shit, some Shakespeare shit. Like I'm going to commit suicide, basically. <laughs> or, or uh, in other words, I'm done for. It, it's sort of the same sort of vibe. Which is to say, she doesn't expect to either play Suzume Gahara again because they're that much better than Suzume Gahara. They don't even think that Suzume Gahara is going to be anybody else, <laughs> and they're not going to see him ever again. Because it's around Robin, otherwise you would see them again, even if you just beat them. Even if you beat them badly, you're going to see them again. Or, it's Sayonara because she doesn't expect to play Koyuri, like, just, and, and get any sort of satisfaction. And so it's like an emotional Sayonara. It's like, whatever, there go my hopes for you. Goodbye. Either is possible. But she's, like I said, she's written Kirby off one way or another. It's like, I, I'm, I'm done with you. You're not my savior. And it's not in a condescending way either. It's like, it sucks that it had to happen this way. But you can't handle me and I, I don't know how to change myself. So let's just move on. I'm sorry. That's, that's how it is. It's a damn shame, but that's just how it is. And when you really think about it, it, on the other hand, does give hope because she hasn't looked down on Koyuri to the point that she's not interested in dealing with Koyuri ever again because she's like, she's condescending Koyuri. She's not doing that. It's based on Koyuri's skill. And so Koyuri can get better. And even if she were like an asshole about it, Kurba, Kurba could just go back in and, and take Kurba out and, and stick it to Kurba that way. Sure, that could happen too. But now it's open to the point to where it's like maybe Kurba can go and talk to Kurba. Maybe Kurba can go and hash it out their differences or see exactly what is bothering Kurba to a greater extent. Get the full picture from Kurba or from somebody on the team. Probably Corba though, would let her in, you know, into her feelings a little bit more likely than, than anybody else. Probably. I find this team to be very interesting because Chiharu seems to be very selfish. Like I said, she, she played to Corba was asleep, which is all nice and well and good. But then she dragged Corba on the ground to where her skirt started falling down and she didn't give a shit. And Mogami had to try, like, volunteer to, to, to carry her instead. Because Chiharu just didn't care. Now you can say it's because she's that close to, to Kurba that she doesn't care, and Kurba is pretty lewd herself. But it, first of all, we don't know whether she got that from Chiharu or not. That's possible. <laughs> she could have just gotten that from Chiharu, just like a uh, Sara Matsunaga from Ever Seventeen got the the Nini Ninja from uh, You is her name. And and then uh, like it, it could also be that like she's just it doesn't matter. She's just a selfish. I wouldn't say asshole, but she's selfish because she's not considering how other people might view Kurba in that state, right? And she seems to want Kurba to find somebody good more so than Kurba to feel happy with herself. 
in terms of being able to like like being beaten is good because then she can go out like she can go all out and somebody can return her shots that's what it means if you get beaten or it can mean she tries different she gets to try different things and they don't work but she still gets to try different things playing somebody like Corey means you get to just whip on them and it's so easy you can just spank their ass over and over again <coughs> you know no difference in how you spank them they're still gonna cry right you don't need there's no need to get the belt you just what what belt i don't have a belt who cares i'll still whip her and she's still gonna cry you know no oh, that's that's probably not the best analogy but it's, it's like it's like literally like i don't know it's like i'm trying to not to be too rude with my analogies but it's like i can't do anything different but who cares because like with this it doesn't it's like some really good tennis player in a local league like recreational player ripping up on some kid like some 12 year old kid who's not playing to to try and go into the juniors or anything strong you know anything good and so since he's not a good 12 year old i don't mean etchy's in but i mean like any real life good 12 year old would fuck up an adult league player because he's not a good 12 year old the like 4.0 tennis player or whatever is going to crush the 12 year old but they want to get better and so like their shots suck and they know they suck and they're not really feeling any sort of gratification by beating the, the little kid they want to play somebody who is stronger who can teach them potentially or at the very least through losing they might find out something about how to tweak their game somehow even if they even if when they go all out it's still the same type of shots but they might like the intangibles how to feel with certain ray during a point how they respond when they're losing how they can try and and think differently or try to handle their emotions differently or how to change their positioning a certain way and then maybe that can maybe do something to their shots a little bit differently or how to try and read an opponent this way and in that way i can through not clairvoyance because that's thinking ahead but through perception get in the game that way but if it's just like some fucking nobody <laughs> that you're beating up on you're not learning anything you're not going to be able to improve your game. You're not going to be able to resolve those difficulties that you're having. And so she can't. You know, that's that's the issue here. That is, that's what makes it way deeper than I'm pretty sure most people are viewing it. Is she, she just can't. Because she has the problem. It's not Kuriri's problem that she's lost. I mean, it is, but that's to her. But for Kuriba, that doesn't got shit to do with Kuriri. I mean, it does, but it's not, it's the Koyuri's not going to be able to fix that. If Kuriba were good enough, she could fix that on her own, regardless of Koyuri, and still whip Koyuri's ass. <laughs> While getting Koyuri more involved. But like I said, it's a thin line. If she doesn't do it that well, if she doesn't do it in that exact way, Koyuri is going to beat her. So she's not as good as some people seem to think she is. That's just that. And I find this team very interesting because we got like soccer, the girl with the black hair crying. And we don't know why. And and otherwise she's so angry and aloof all the time. But not, not real angry. She's just like, ah, it's so passe. I don't really give a fuck about this. Okay, yeah, I'll play. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this match over. But that's her. Otherwise she seems incredibly focused while she's playing. And it's like, what's going Like, she's the most interesting character to me. I really want to know what's going on in her head. And then Chiharu has got this this issue with being almost like a yandere, sort of. Not not really, but but seeing she, she seems single-mindedly focused on Kuriba. To the extent that she's ignoring Kuriba. It's like her perception of what she believes Kuriba wants. That's just my impression. And we're obviously going to get more to determine whether or not that's the case, or whether there's more beneath the surface, or whether I'm just straight up wrong. And then everything we said about Kuriba. The team seems deeper than it would have seemed at the start. The same with Tsubame and with Mozuyama. It's sort of like that too, but it's more than Mozuyama. Asano has really upped her riding. I believe that this team has much more to it, Takoku, than even Tsubame. 
the big players in terms of character death in Subame development were Kohime and or are Kohime and Kumami. And that's two characters. I'm not saying the others don't really have development, but th that's that's two characters who have the most. Here, we've already got three characters who are competing with those two. I wouldn't say that they are better than Kohime and Kumami, but we have only seen them play one match, damn it. We've seen Kuber play one freaking match. Even that match was skipped, but only the relevant par the parts that really mattered were shown, so that's fine. And then besides that, you get like a little short one-point exchange in practice after their match against Suzume Gahara between Chiharu and Kurba. And that's all we get, and that is enough to get them that close to Teikoku. This is very, uh, Tsubame, my fault. This is very strong. Very strong. Especially considering this is like, uh, after five years, <laughs> just getting back into it. And especially considering that this is still in the grand scheme of things, regardless of the real life passage of time, the first fucking tournament. <laughs> the first tournament. And it is the, it's still the first round of the first tournament, and it is the second match of the first tournament. That is strong. Now we skip the local tournaments and all that stuff, but that doesn't, that don't, <laughs> who cares about those? If, if you really want to count those, and you would count, I guess, the Moziyama versus Suzume Gahara. That is a local tournament match, but like it's not a tournament, it's just a scrimmage thing. It's like a scrimmage match between two schools for the fuck of it. <laughs> just for fun. And there is development there too, but, but now that we are in the first official tournament match, we have the preliminaries, and then we have the match against Meiji Osaka, and most people did not understand Christy at all that I have seen. Here or in Japan, they did not understand Christine Christie. And I'm thankful for, for Asano for just doing her thing and not trying to address them. And then, she and Muramo too, Muramo counts for that too. Because Muramo and, and Christine Christie are sort of linked. And then after that, we've got this thing. This ram with Teikoku. This ram. Smack shoot. Now, I already knew this was going to happen, that they were going to lose Suzume Gahara, but <laughs> with Kurba, I, di I didn't expect, well, until I saw the match, <laughs> until I saw, like, the, the first part of the match, I didn't expect that she would have this much death. I knew there was going to be, like, she was getting a feel for Koyuri, she was, she already sort of suspected she would beat Koyuri, but, but I... I didn't know that she was hoping that she would lose. Or that, that Cory Ree would be able to push her and, and 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 help her to find a part of herself that she wanted to be able to reach, to achieve, to feel good about. That she that she had never thought she had the ability to find. I just, I just thought that she thought that she could beat Corey from the start, but she admits this when she's feeling down about it, when she's talking to Corey at the end, she's like, Yahari or whatever, y Yapari. She's like, I, I knew that it would be like this, that it would end up this way somehow, I, I already knew it. But at the same time, she, she did say that after you beat Christine Christie, I said, maybe, maybe you could be the one. That's what I felt. You could be the one to help me. And then Corby looks up from her sorrow and she's like, huh? And then Corby's like, never mind. Goodbye, Corby Chan. And she still says Chan. You know, she's still using that, that term of endearment to Corby. You don't know exactly why, but what we can get is that there is still a chance. I'll tell you, man, I analyze everything, because every, everything here is put deliberately. Just like Kohime usually says San to the person she's referring to, except, like, really just Kumami. It's the only time, really. Maybe, like, some other rare occasion, but it's usually just Kumami, where she drops the San, and she refers to the person more casually. She and Kumami have a closer relationship. Everything Asano does is very deliberate. And since this is Japanese, a lot of the 
respect and reciprocity, reciprocity, I think is the word, in terms of respect, right? That cycle, that whole spill, that's very important, more so even than in English. You can make it important in English, but naturally so, it, it's not, it, you would have to go a little bit more deliberately to try and make it so, to change the structure of the language a little bit more to try and make it so. With, with Japanese honorifics and all that, the keigo, the, the, we're not really getting into that, but, but the, how people are addressed, that's always something you got to look into. And that's another layer of some type of development to look into. I'm trying to think of if there's anything else I can bring up here. I will say that there are some other instances of Krupa's character that I noted down. I will save those for another video, but I will bring one up. Kurba doesn't really remember people's names unless they are interesting to her. I, I, I could have said this the last video when I was talking about Mogami and Augury, but I didn't see the exact linkage because it was still being written. But now that she said that she saw potential in Koyuri, she saw rather that there was a chance, is what she said, that things could have worked out with her and Koyuri after Koyuri had played Christine Christie. I'm not saying her whole after after she had played Christie. That that sort of seals the deal for me. Because she did not remember who Jumonji was at all. But she remembered Koyuri's name after having seen Koyuri play once. But she had played Jumonji before. Sometime in the past. So she played like Jumonji's whole team. So she would have heard Jumonji's name quite a bit, probably. And why didn't she remember Jumonji's name, though? Because Jumonji wasn't as impressive. We know that Koyuri is stronger than Jumonji. And we know that Jumonji had to train to get to a point of skill where she still couldn't tangle with Korba anywhere near as close as Koyuri could. <laughs> she just got destroyed by Korba the first time. And so Korba didn't notice her. But was it because Korba didn't see any flair in Jumonji? Oh, well, Jumonji definitely has a lot of flair. I would say more than Koyuri. Right? Just look at how she dresses. She's got the, the Shido eye sparkles and, and, and shines whenever she's hitting one of her shots, like the Grand Cross and all that shit. She's got the lens flare. <laughs> you know, she's got the effects. Quirby doesn't have that. The most Quirby has is Maggie, 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 Maggie. That's all she has. She's got a little tail thing, her pigtail sound effect. That's it. But... She beat Christy. <laughs> and Christy is strong. Very, very, very fucking strong. And they went far. It was like 20, like what, 27, 26, 28? That doesn't make any sense. It's got to be high too. Like 29 or 27 or something like that. I don't, I don't remember what their, what their score was, but they went far. Even further than Augury and, and Koyuri when they were neck and neck and playing for the position of the, the ace of the team, the, the number one ranking. Augury's still going to keep calling herself the ace. and People's going to still keep calling herself that even though Koyuri should be. But whatever. <laughs> Koyuri's just that nice. Just that accommodating. But Korba, right? Korba sees that Koyuri has beaten somebody that powerful. And... She's smiling at Koyuri from the bleachers. And like I said in that last video with Active, she's like, hmm. You know, she's, she's got like the, the little pose, the hand pose. And it's like, okay, so she's just profiling. She's just trying to look cool. You know, she's just showing her stuff. But really what she's thinking is, this girl might have the juice. She might have the moves. She might have what it takes. She's going to be able to do it for me. What I can't do for myself. And there's like no way to think that until she tells Koyuri. But that's fine. You can't read people's minds in real life. So as long as there's no contradiction in the narrative, 
that's okay. I'm willing to give it a chance if it can hold my attention long enough to where it explains itself in the end. Any other work of writing where that, that shit, I drop it, I'm not going to complain about something I had never seen. I'm just going to say, the because like, it could have come up later. But I'm going to say the fact that it sucks so hard that I dropped it means I don't give a fuck one way or another. Whether or not it explains itself in the end. It sucked too hard up until then. But this was good up until then. And as a matter of fact, the very next, as a matter of fact, the very next chapter after she was like, okay, let's see what Susan Megahar can do. And everybody was just staring down from Teikoku to the, the Susan Megahar peons from those bleachers. Our Teikoku was just hawking them. Just looking at those prey. Next chapter, they lose. Susan Megahar, obviously. And it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll read one more. <laughs> I, like, who, who wouldn't want to read more at that point? She is excellent with her facing. Excellent. Whereas just fucking uh, Drake and Josh would say, she's got excellent pacing. Excellent. <laughs> you know? So why wouldn't I continue? Not to mention there is character development at that point, at that chapter. It wasn't just, okay, let's see them lose, and then the next chapter, let's see how they lost. There was character development all up until that point. Not just from Kurba and, and them, and, and Koyuri and all that stuff, but from, and, and Agri too, as a matter of fact, but, but from Agri and Mogami. I was going to say not, not from Agri and, and Koyuri, but from Agri and Mogami. The Agri and Koyuri stuff I didn't really hit on, and it's not super major, but it is character development. That is worth noting. But for Agri and Mogami, I made a whole freaking video on it. So, yes, that was, and it was like over an hour. That is real character development between the two of those guys, girls. And so for that to be, like, I guess you could say filler, if you want to put it that way, sure. But that's some real good filler, man. <laughs> some real good filler. And then we get the actual match. And then we see Koyuri winning. So then you want to say, what happened? How did she lose? <laughs> we just see that she won in the next chapter. And then we see how she lost. And then we get a little bit more development. And that 7.1, 7.2, 7.3 are a little more development right now. And it's paced excellently, man. It's paced so excellently that I know that we're going to find out more about this team. We're gonna find out more about them to the point to where this this might end up I would say this maybe is now my favorite manga of all time. In the past I would have said Madoka Magica, the different story. Let me let me let me just see what they're gonna do with Panabi. I wanna see what they do with that useless wretch. And then at that point I would I say they because I, I don't know what is going I'm assuming Asuna was writing like all this by herself and might have like an assistant or so. But that assistant might count as a day. So I will see what they... Or I know she listens to fan input. But I will see what they do with the... Speaking of which, I gotta fill out that form. And I'm gonna put that in the description too. There is a form that you can very easily Google Translate. that Where you can leave your feedback on how her latest chapters are. You can, you can just type in the name of the chapter you're talking about. And she looks at them. And I'm presuming she looks at the subreddit too. And every other place. And so because of all that stuff... She, and the fact that she's a good writer naturally, like, just evidently, this team is going to be a great team, and this tournament is going to be a great tournament, provided no extenuating circumstances arise. And this is probably going to beat out Madoka Magica, the different story, which is such a great manga that I had it above every anime I had seen, ever, including Yu Hakusho, until Scorching Ping Pong Girls came out. So for a time, it was my favorite work of fiction ever. But this whole series, man. Anyhow, she has seen something in Koyuri. Kurba. Or she had seen something in Koyuri, rather. And this is a bit of selfishness, too. Because she wanted to appeal to Koyuri through their playing, but regardless. And she had a, a, a mask on. She wasn't really saying what she... I won't, I won't say a mask, <clears throat> not not in the literary sense, but she had an emotional mask on, right? She wasn't hiding 
her have her feelings behind something else, right? And she wasn't trying to put up a front, but she wasn't revealing how she really felt. And so emotionally, she was behind the wall, so to speak. But through the playing, she wanted Corey Reed to save her. She wanted Corey Reed to help her. And that's why she recognized Corey Reed. That's why she acknowledged Corey Reed. That's why she knew Corey Reed's name before she even played Corey Reed. She just was skipping through the hallway with Corey Reed. She was, <laughs> you, you know, she, she was spending legitimate time with Corey Reed. She warmed up with Corey Reed. She gave Corey Reed the time of day, man. And it's because she wanted something out of it. So there's nothing wrong with being selfish. He's still selfish. And at the same time, you feel bad for her. Because she... She invested all that energy in that girl. And it didn't pay off at all. But she had no choice. She had to have gone all out or she would have never known. So I wanted to add just now because I've been thinking about it. I was thinking about it actually when I was doing the last part that you saw just a second ago, but it is a bit more speculatory. So let's just go ahead and say it just for the sake of it, because if I'm right, I could say, called ya. And if you hear any rending noise or whatever, that that's my, uh, my stupid computer exporting in the background. I got to get that thing checked out. The fan is way too loud. But anyhow... The last couple things that I wanted to say about Kurba, besides all the extra stuff that I can say at a later point in time. She said at the very start in chapter zero, the, the, the first chapter of Reburn, Scorching Ping Pong Girls Reburn, that she wanted to go to the Nationals and she wanted to make it something that is cool to participate in and something that is very stylish to rent. And I talked all about her style and her flair, her accessories, the fact that she wants to flaunt her stuff, whatever that is, whatever, whatever she finds fitting to show the world in terms of extravagance. And based on everything that you've probably heard me just say a second ago, right, that seems a little bit stark. It seems a little bit odd. That glare is bothering the heck out of me. And I can't stop it. It is just in the exact wrong angle. It's it's odd because, like, you, you know what I'm saying, right? You heard me just a second ago, and you're like, no, what, what are you saying, man? You're just rambling at this point, man. Just end the damn video. Okay, well, what I'm saying is, unless you, you really do already know, right? You know that Kuriba is not self-confident. Not in what matters to her. She doesn't feel sure about herself. She doesn't feel like she can accomplish what she wants to accomplish the most. And that is be a good, successful, play. I want to take off successful, okay? Who cares about that? But on the other hand, being a good player and being a successful player, it's that hobby, right? It's that what I value the most. It is that not what my duty is. It is that what I want to bring to the table and I enjoy doing it. She wants to have it both ways. Right? Instead of just the career, she wants to have the what I like. <laughs> and unfortunately, it seems like she's trying to, just like I was saying, mask the end result of her winning and not being able to win how she wants to win. With, I'm going to dress up and we're going to have all these poses and she's going to compose the lyrics and we're going to have this great choreographed scheme going on and a cool name, Burasawa and, and whatever group name. It, it's all to mask the fact that she is not comfortable with how she is as a player. Even if she succeeds, she doesn't think she's good. And so the most she can do is to try and put all that other stuff, that other flash and no substance in the same room, even though they're not going to 
commingle, right? They're not going to commingle because because they aren't necessarily. The, I mean, in her heart, right? I'm 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 sorry for just saying like this stuff. Like I'm just expecting you to know it, but I'm just like going offhand because this is speculatory still. But they're not going to commingle within her heart. I want to emphasize that those two most dear passions of hers are not going to coincide at the same time within her inner soul. It's not going to happen. So far, at least, that, that's not what she believes is going to happen. And so the most she can do is tack the flash onto the success. Because she cannot have success in flash. She can't have success as a table tennis player in doing everything that the best table tennis players that, that now I'm totally speculating, that she looks up to can do. And when I say the best that she looks up to can do, I mean, not necessarily Hayabusa and who won the last year's nationals, but I mean like the pros, right? The, the people who can really do it all. She can't. She's stuck at a ceiling. And she's like, well, if I can't achieve in this measure, then, hey, an achievement is an achievement. And I can at least bring the next best thing to the table nonetheless. So it's it's a bit of as modern dayers would say, cope, right? It's, it's a coping mechanism. And really what I would call it, because it's the same thing, but I don't like using that word. But what I would call it is settling. She's settling for second best. And it's really sad because when you think about it, it, well, well subjectively sad, but the reason I find it sad is because when you really look at that chapter and she's, doing well against Jumonji and she is soaking in her fans glory, support for her you really think about how she's trying to escape how she feels about herself because her life is table tennis otherwise she would not have <laughs> vied for it so heavily for so long put so much time and effort and energy into it it's not like oh I suck at this but hey I got this stuff I got everything else I did Right? It's not even I got the results that matter because she she wouldn't be going this far to try and go to the nationals and, and, and find some sort of challenge in it. She definitely wants a challenge regardless, right? But she wouldn't be trying to go to the nationals and find some sort of challenge in it like Chiharu was postulating. And she also wouldn't be going to the nationals and, and, and even before that, going to the cities pressed as hell to find somebody to beat her. At that stage, worrying about that at that stage, she is desperate, man. She was trying at, at the lowest stages to find somebody. You see what I mean? And then doing all this, it, this is just my theorizing again, but doing all this dress up and crap. If she felt comfortable doing it anyway, right? She wouldn't have to try and bring that to the nationals and, and really just be extra about it. You know, that's like where I say extravagant because she's being extra. She's being way too showy. She's being way too gaudy with with how she she's flamboyant. It's like, oh, look at me. Look at me. Look at I'm not saying that you can't like what you like in an overt fashion. But as most people would assume and me as well, <laughs> I'm in that number. She might be overcompensating for something. And she's telling Mogami, last point, that she worked so hard, right? If you read that chapter zero, you see her. She she said that she has worked so hard to master the RPB. And Mogami is, is literally crying. <laughs> I was going to say basically, but she is literally crying because she was not able to do it. Despite having worked so hard herself. But the difference is that she gave up in Kerr but didn't give up. However, even though she did not give up. She can't do any better. Mogami, she she stopped. That's her that's her current state of mind, is that I, I stopped. That's her belief. And who knows? If I continue on, maybe I could do more. Maybe I could achieve greater heights. Maybe I could accomplish greater things. Maybe I wouldn't have become such a disappointment to myself in the realm of table tennis. But Kuraba is different because Kuraba did give it her all. She 
did achieve as much as she could achieve, and she did get all the fame that she could try and get, and in her level, in her level, and apparently this is the most she can do, this is her max, and you can almost imagine it as, as saying to Mogami, unless this is like going to be a complete retcon, and Asano did not think of this, and I will be able to tell Asano, if you... If you're watching this or you got somebody watching this, whatever, I'm going to translate. I can tell if you're bullshitting us. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, that's good. I could, Unless you are that damn nice. Or if it's it's just... I, 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 let, me, let me not think too negatively, okay? Let's, let's not do the what ifs it was not too good or for whatever reason. Let's just go ahead and assume that it's going to be like this. Because as far as I see it right now, this is the best way to do it. Unless, again, you take a gamble... And you come out really nilly with something, pff, who the heck could have seen that? And it is that nice. But otherwise, just following the, the train of logic, this Kurba is, you can imagine, telling, encouraging Mogami to keep on trying. And that if you, if you give it your all, then that's what matters. And whatever you end up reaching, it's going to be more than what you had put into it at the start. It is going to be a culmination of your efforts that result in a better you. You know, like even if you worked as hard as you could, right? And you didn't get that job you wanted, but you still learned a lot in the process. Even if you dated all these girls and whatever, and you didn't get the one, well, you still got extra social skills. Maybe you made a lot of friends along the way. Might not even have been girl. Friends, it might have been like some guy friends when you were hanging out with, with uh, whoever and whatever, or you, or you met somebody at the bar when you got stood up. Who knows? Who knows? Like literally, I'm tr I'm trying to look at the worst case scenario. It's not really the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is one of these these uh, incels go and shoot up the bar where you at. But, but I'm trying to look at the worst case scenario in in not so deadly terms, and you can still find a positive within it, right? I mean, even if you want to say deadly terms, I, I don't know about the afterlife, who knows, right? So, like, I, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that Kuraba, right, she is saying that she has worked so damn hard, and, well, Chihara is really saying it because Chihara is like, oh, I love Kuraba, I love you so much, but, but really, <laughs> she's not going to say it like that, but that's, you know, that's what she's thinking, but she, but Kuraba is affirming it, she is confirming that she had practiced that hard. And Mogami, Mogami is starting to doubt herself, and, and she's like, that doesn't make any sense, how are you, but I, I tried, and, and, and Kurba's like, yeah, seriously, you gotta work that hard at it, but it will work out in the end, something will work out in your favor in the end, if you work that hard, and is that always the case? No, but you don't gotta be pedantic with it, obviously, any person who's been through life would know that if you try to work, not someone gives you shit, but if you try to work 100% at every single thing, you are not going to get 100% back in every single thing. You might not even get 50% back of what you put into it. In equivalency, you might not even get the knowledge. You might just like, huh, well, I, I, I did all this studying and I failed the tests and I can't even remember what the fuck I studied for. Uh, and you got to think about what you're grateful for. You know, you can go the all-encompassing route and say you're, you're grateful for, like, the life you were able to lead to just be able to, to try and learn stuff. Or maybe it's something that you don't even realize, like, you were exercising your brain, and so you added a little bit of time to your lifespan, right? Whatever it was going to be beforehand, you know, all things considered, right, right, everything consistent, then... You, you 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 did some some work, you know. You, you might have eaten some brain food. You might have gotten some better sleep. You were definitely working your nervous system harder for the good than it would have been before. It's some sort of optimistic quality, some sort of positive nature, right? No matter what. But at the same time, Corba, what she really wanted, she couldn't get. And she's going on like, if it doesn't work out, you know, that's a shame. But when it does, it's so cool. 
But I'm, I'm damn sure, man, it is all just the front, man. It is all just the front. Because either she's retreating to that mask of what she's trying to dress up as, right? Stylize herself as, stylize. In other words, she's doing a, a bit of, I, I'm trying to do a completely different word. But when I say dress up, I mean, this is a veil. I mean, she is not this type of, well, when she is this depressed, she's not that showy type of person. She realizes that she's just plain boring and a letdown to herself, right in her eyes. And so all that coolness, she's either like just straight up lying about it and just trying to encourage Mogami or she is in denial about how she really feels about herself. And so she's trying to postulate, she's trying to pretend as some one better than who she actually is. She's a pretender. I, I don't know who she's trying to be, but there's definitely some form of what people would say imposter syndrome because she does not feel comfortable within herself. She feels as though she is cosplaying her ideal self who as of right now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like she can ever attain that person she wants to be.